Uh, okay, so welcome everyone to the March Aukri community meeting. Um, this is an open source CNCF meeting, so um, we abide by the code of conduct and we will report this meeting. So if you don't want to be reported, please hop off camera or um, jump off the meeting. So I guess KubeCon Europe is just around the corner. I feel like it approached so quickly. Um, and Nicholas and I, we are preparing for this talk that's coming up on Q1 Edge Day. Um, so Nicholas, I don't know if you saw, but I did start adding some slides, but we'll probably have to do some work there this week. And then another good news is that we got off the waiting list for the Project Pavilion. So um, we got one day uh, at the kiosk there. So Thursday, we'll have an Aukri kiosk in the PM um, shift. So um, Nicholas, I know you said that you had the fun kind of interactive demo. Um, so I think it'd be cool if we could show it off there. And I'll also promote it like at the end of our um, cute concession. Yeah, and... for, for the GMUI, I hope it will work as intended because, uh, well, there have been some issues. The demo is based on the array mode and there have been some uh, issue with the kubelet crashing recently. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think worst case, I feel like, you know, we have other recorded demos that we could show. Um, maybe if you do get it working, um, maybe you could like record it at home just so we have like, a video that we can show for backup. Um, Nicholas, let me know if you want to pair on that or something, or I'm assuming these, is this a crashing of the cubelet happening with your agent refactor PR? Or is it with um, a, a further iteration? It's further than this. And it's uh, with the DRA mode enabled. And it's basically uh, when the kubelet calls the agent for uh, reclaiming the, uh, the resources while giving them back uh, at the deletion of the pod, there sometimes, well, about 80% of the time, uh, an issue where the kubelet just crash and when passing the response from the from the agent so mm. okay I think it's well if the it's yeah lead bug. i mean if it's that reproducible feel free to push up that branch and i can take a look at it for a little too because that's great when it's like 80 percent of the time then i know i'll hit it um so yeah. i'm happy to look at it as well if that's helpful um and if it's a cubelet bug that's always fun putting up a, an upstream issue yeah, that's. I asked them because I saw there were similar issues, but on the uh, uh, provisioning of the resource, not on the unprovisioning. So I asked them on the on the Slack if they think it's the same or if I should open a, another bug. Great, and I think it's yeah. That's um, the CR the. CDI folks are the ones who own a lot of DRI to D D R A. Wow, a lot of acronyms. Um, and so, yeah, we can. If I'm sure there can be a direct, they probably could directly help with the issue as well. Yes, I will put a a, a link to my branch anyway in the in the Acre Slack, so you can have a look. Um, Nicholas, when are you arriving in Paris? Uh, I'm arriving uh, Monday in the evening. So okay. Maybe we should um, sync offline once later this or later next week um, just to touch base on the slides, make sure maybe we can like run it through together once. Um, yeah, sure. That uh, I think that's something we we should definitely do before. And I did also submit a kind of like a SUSE Microsoft joint 
booth session at the Microsoft booth. And Ralph said that he would get me in, but he hasn't <laughs> uh, touched base yet. So let me touch base with him. Um, because, yeah, I think it would be a great idea to just um, spread our audience. So we could do something there. And I know he was also pushing for me to do some kind of demo with um, maybe like SUSE K3s and then Aukri and then um, Wasm <laughs> and then Arc. But we're kind of um, crunched on time. So I'll let you know if I can get that going. Um, so anything else about KubeCon that we should discuss? I just have a quick question. Um, should we be using our Twitter at all? Like, what are our thoughts on, like, if that's an effective way of PRing things, like spreading the word about what we're doing? I guess I haven't even looked at, like, how many people follow that Twitter. It's true. I actually totally forgot. So Twitter. Okay, it has 159 followers. Like, I don't think that's tiny. I feel like we could, like, since I'm not going to be there, I can be our marketer if we want. And I can just tweet about what y'all are doing, but just keep me posted, maybe. Like, um, I can line up maybe in the tweet deck, like, four tweets. I'll go ahead and put some out maybe this week reminding people about the Edge um, talk. And then when you have the booth times, maybe just send me those. Eugen and I can tweet about that. Um, can't promise that they're going to be perfect form, um, but that might be a good way to just remind people we're there. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. We should definitely utilize that. And then if anyone like posts something on LinkedIn to promo the session, we can all just like repost, spread the word. Okay, so Anything else? Any last topics on KubeCon? If not, then I guess we can move on to kind of like the status of the PRs and DRA. And um, I was kind of wondering if we do want to cut a release soon, whether it be like before KubeCon, I guess may be hard, but maybe soon after KubeCon, we could cut a release. Um, or if we should just wait until the DRA stuff is more stable and then cut a release in the next few months. Um, I think part, of, I think that's a lot of it's up to Nicholas and in a way, like how much time like how time's going for you. Um, I think the agent refactor, like after a couple iterations could go in soon, but I don't know if that's worth cutting. Like it would be worth cutting a release, but we wouldn't in the release notes have like a feature set that it, like it adds CRI, which is a good feature set. So we could try to push on the agent refactor and get that in. But from my understanding, Nicholas, that is not your priority right now. Your priority is probably getting DRA to work for your demos and stuff. Yeah, actually, I'm prioritizing this. But uh, for the agent refactor, uh, I wonder if we, well, I think we should probably cut a release before, because we already have things like uh, all the updates uh, of dependencies. And this should probably be uh, a nice moment to have a, well, a patch update or something to have something we, well, before we land uh, the big changes so that if there's anything that happens because of these changes, we are likely to identify this as being because of these changes and not of something else.
Yeah, that's a good point. There's also some issues that came up, like REST security issues then, that we'll want to make sure we're not using um, or not that aren't affecting us. Um, so we should, if we're going to do that, we should vet all of the REST sec issues um, before we cut that release. Yeah, I wonder if we couldn't have some kind of uh, dependable configuration to help us ultimately, automatically uh, getting PRs in whenever there's relevant updates uh, individually. So maybe this would be a, a nice way to uh, keep up with all the uh, dependency updates we usually kind of leave on the side. Yeah, we had that. I think we have a PR that should be constantly. I thought we had the like update dependencies PR that Roa built a way back, but that was pre Dependabot. And so now that Dependabot does the same thing, we might just want to switch to doing that. And for the status of uh, DRA thing, uh, well, I don't think we will land DRA anytime soon because it's still alpha uh, on in Kubernetes, so it's behind a feature gate and everything. So it's you well not easily accessible for users. Uh, but all the things that are related to uh, refactoring the agent and the uh, controller splitting the configuration into uh, kind of refining the API. Uh, all these things can be done without the array being active. Uh, and I think we may be able to merge the array under uh, a feature gate as well, so we can continue testing on this. But uh, I don't think we should be uh, having the array as a default until uh, all or supported versions have DRA available without having to enable a feature gate or something. Just to uh, clarify, I think testing for when I tested for DRA, uh, I think it was the first time I had to uh, customize the configuration of container D uh, within my cluster. So that's not some things that are usually done. And I think for CRI, you have to do that for some versions, right? Too. Like I was wondering with the using CRI, if we require newer versions of Kubernetes as well. Um, well, it well all the uh, versions we test with are supporting this, but uh, we may have to change the readme uh, to not say that we support up to uh, I don't remember what old version this is, but I am not even sure that we are still compatible with this anyway. So. Yeah, I think uh, having like a version matrix of like this release of Valkyrie supports these versions of Kubernetes would be really helpful. Um, I guess on the release note, so it sounds like we want to cut a release um, before KubeCon because we've done all those dependency updates and um, maybe we set a deadline to cut that release of when... KubeCon's like, I don't know, when is KubeCon? It's two weeks away, right? Yeah, two weeks away. So aim to cut the release like Thursday the 14th, maybe. And in that time being, if someone feels empowered to add a Dependabot, um, like configure Dependabot and update all of our dependencies so that that can really be a fresh leak, that'd be great. Otherwise, we already have some dependencies updated. Uh, 
Yes, there's another uh, kind of feature request that I think I may create a bug for, uh, well, an issue for, is basically we, uh, when I built Acre recently, I just happened to see that we have embedded uh, three different uh, web uh, frameworks. Basically, we have uh, Actex for the uh, webhook. We have um, another one that I don't remember the name for the metrics. And Tonic is based on Axon. So basically, we have three web framework embedded. So maybe we should try to reduce that number. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. And that might be a a nice time to uh, also switch to using the Cube API for the um, for the webhook as well. But I think there's already some issue for this. So you're saying up, use the updated Cube. API, even though that's a big part of your refactor of the agent, I guess not a huge part, but um, basically pull that part out. It's uh, in the currently for the webhook structures, like uh, we're using uh, a custom crate for this. And now there's support for uh, webhooks in uh, the cube. Uh, oh, right. So with all the structures for it. And did you update that in your refactor or? Uh, no. no, I just made, I just did the agent in the refactor. I didn't touch on the webhook. Okay. That's a really good isolated issue. Um, yep. If anyone here is trying to do something before, um, like wants to contribute something for KubeCon, yeah, updating our webhook to use the latest KubeRS would be a really great scoped. Um, Issue. And I think we have an issue for that, right? I think so, yes. A pretty old one, I think. Yeah, yeah. 2021. Oh my gosh. Very you embarrassing. I can, I can try and take a look because I have uh, one for KubeCon. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, wow, that is old. So for the web hook, um, I have a question about the the certificate, the cert um, for the web hook. So right now it use the auto sign as yeah, self sign cert, and the expiration date is set to like a never expire. Um, so but usually the the for security concern that the certificate usually get rotated. Um, what's the common way to handle the cert change. So right now the webhook doesn't it's only read the certificate once and then and use it forever. So in case of the cert rotation, so what's the common approach to address this issue? It's like manually manually tear down the the webhook and then uh, so it to refresh the certificate certificate or we should add something to the webhook to kind of always um, to handle the search update or search rotation scenario. Um, so I think you may be referring to the example certificate, um, which is non-expiring because we, um, or maybe it does actually, I, I don't know. But um, from my understanding, the cert is in a Kubernetes secret. So you could update the secret with a new certificate and rotate it as you would rotate um, Kubernetes secrets in general? Yeah, but the, the webhook, the, the running com, um, webhook will not get the new certificate because it only read the certificate uh, when it's started, when it starts. And once the search get rotated, it's still, the, the webhook will, will use, is still use the old certificate. 
then it won't the new um deploy configuration will not work and there's someone uh, manually re delete the part to kind of restart the webhook and I think um, from the internet that looks like it's one of the approach because um, people will say it's nature to kind of tear down the, the a part in Kubernetes and then to get the, to refresh the search. But um, another approach is just have the webhook to handle the search rotation issue. So you will get not um, either always read the the search from the search storage or uh, monitor the search change and update the search, refresh the search when when it changed. I just wonder right now the um, in the webhook in Acre is read once and then use it forever. So uh, additional step required to. Uh, handle the search rotation scenario. Well, watching over uh, the the file is usually well, it's doable, but it's usually well. I'm not sure that uh, even if you update the secret, it won't be updated in the mount on the container. So it would just be you would need to in fact watch the secret on uh, the Kubernetes API directly. Uh, so it, well, I'm not sure it's really ideal to do this. It should be better to just say that if you rotate the, well, maybe this, I don't know if there's some way to automate this, to say that if the uh, secret change, then the pod should be restarted. But if there's some way to do this, it should be whether handled by uh, Kubernetes the the app, I think. Um, one way to do to handle this is um, whenever a request come in, then the server the webhook will always read the the current um, certificate from the storage, um, which means. Uh, um, I think because the configuration deployment is not quite often, so um, maybe that's a way to solve this issue. Because um, it, I don't uh, think this will work because, uh, well, when you get a request, you already have the, well, when you get a request, you already have the, set. you need the certificate to be loaded beforehand. So I don't um, know if there, there's a way really if we don't use uh, ActiveX, I believe. So um, with a different framework, you should be able to retrieve or refresh the certificate from upon connection. OK, so but we will need to have an updated version of the certificate on the disk. Um, so the serve is mounted, um, Mari mounted, right? So yeah. it's a link, um, link, sim, sim link file. So um, whenever, if we do it, whenever um, the connection coming in, then the server, uh, webhook server will read the certificate and use it to validate the connection. Um, when yes, the what I was uh, saying there is, I don't think the kubelet updates the original file. Uh, uh, um, it does update. It the, does. Okay. Yeah, because the, it's value mounted. So whenever the secret change, the it, um, after a period of time, it will get reflected to the to the value mounted file. If it's environment variable, then no. It won't, but um, if it's the file mounted, then the file content will get refreshed. Okay. You're saying if it's a volume mount, it'll dynamically ensure that the host volume that it's mounting is always the is always the state that the container gets. 
Yes. So the well, after a period of time, the Kubernetes will kind of refresh or change, update the uh, file, the link, the same link to point to the new um, certificate. And if the web push server uh, always read from the storage, the link file, then it will address the third rotation um, issue. Uh, the problem is it might reduce the performance because every time a connection coming in, you need to trace the the search, uh, search chain and read, read the search. Um, but provided the equity configuration deployment is not that often, so performance on handling each configuration deployment might not be that uh, important. So otherwise, then we, um, the file monitoring, the file change is also a uh, uh, approach. Yeah, but it's a linked same link, so it's not. Um, a regular file. So in Rust, uh, monitor a link file is kind of tricky. You have to go to the low level uh, I notify to to implement or to to implement the functionality. Yeah, I don't think there are other ways than doing I notify if you want to do it dynamically. Yeah, another option might be that if it fails, it restarts. Um, and on restart, it pulls the correct um, bundle. But I think. Um, this is a good point, Johnson, about how we can implement rotating secrets in our webhook. And I'd be surprised if there's also not like a best practice in something out there, like you mentioned. And so, Lior, if you're going to take a look at this, regardless, like moving over to the QBRS um, webhook implementation is like separate of what we're discussing. So that can be like a, a first um, iteration. And then if while doing that, you see that QRS has utils for doing this, or you just find that there's a way to detect secrets have been rotated and use them, then we can pull that in too. But Johnson, maybe we can open up a separate issue for this specifically, because this is a good one to tackle as well. Okay, so I will uh, open an issue to keep track of this, and then we can discuss um, the solution, uh, use the issue. All right, so uh, I think last time when we were cutting a release, I think we just went through offline on Slack and tried to get the process going. So I'll have to review the process again, but we can kick that off probably like early next week uh, and get that going. Um, are there any other agenda items that people wanted to discuss today? The, um, like, I think something we haven't discussed in a while that would be interesting to think about is, do we have ways we want to grow the community um, and maintainership and stuff like that? Because, um, I think we are somewhat falling behind on issues. Like people are putting up issues and no one's responding. And um, I don't know if that's something where we want to personally amongst us have a triage, like someone's in charge of triaging for the week, or maybe we don't care that we're not keeping up with issues, but just something I wanted to point out. I'm personally having a hard time finding the time or motivating um, addressing those issues. And I don't know if there was 
some sort of structure that we had that would help with that. Yeah. I guess other than like the conference things, we should definitely try to think about how we can do that. Um, I think I had some ideas about um, creating more eye-catching demos because I do think right now our demos are good for exploring like the basics of Aukri and stuff, um, but maybe being able to hold some kind of like hands-on workshop that is really easy to get up and running and maybe includes like components of AI or something because you know everyone loves AI right now. Um, I think that would be really good. And maybe we can start to try and expand our audience to other conferences as well. I know KubeCon has been a major thing for us, but um, I know Ralph mentioned that there's other conferences like Scale in LA uh, or OSS Summit, North America, and that would be good. But another kind of easier way to um, promote Aukri, I think, would be that CNCF has these webinars. Um, and I think this is a good way to just like get content circulated among the CNCF audience. And I know that they're always kind of looking for um, speakers on this because I think, uh, yeah, not everyone wants to do it. So that's a good way we can have like a YouTube video on it after and share that around. Um, what else? I mean, I think it would be great to be able to um, collaborate with other CNCF projects as well um, and create demos, whether it be doing something with WASMs or um, just other projects if anyone has any ideas. Those were kind of my thoughts. And yeah, I think it would also be good to obviously continue to keep track of our issues and try to meet KPIs like um, maybe like fixing three at least three bugs in a quarter or something like that I don't know if that's unrealistic but um, having some sort of KPI and tracking that I think we should be probably better about that um, and also I think once we're making more progress towards having a version 1.0, I think that would be great because then we'll have things like, hopefully we'll have things like performance testing um, and things like that done, which then Augury will you know, hopefully be more stable and people would be more willing to use it, contribute to it. Maybe we could try to, uh, I don't know if there, I think there might already be people using Acri. Maybe we could try to reach to them and so we can have some, uh, well, adoption uh, listing or something. Uh, so this way, is, this could build uh, confidence in the fact that Acri is usable. Would folks here have any interest in having like a triage rotation amongst us of like outside of our community meetings, like this person's in charge of responding to issues for that week? Or does that feel too overbearing? That seems like a good idea to me.
I could push up um, internally or like um, for spin. Um, we have a app, a spin app that like says who needs to be doing triage for the week. And I can make a spin app for us that does that. And like, we can just have, you can add your name to the rotation and then <clears throat> see who's on rotation for the week. And um, that way, like if you're, oh, wait, maybe I'm on rotation. You just go to an endpoint and they'll say like, no, it's Lior. Um, something like that could be helpful. Um, but I think before setting this up, I'd want to know like Johnson, Lior, Nicholas, what you think of that. And like the people who would be in the rotation, like, do you like that idea or is it just another thing that you have to do? I think, I think that, that makes sense. As a, as, sorry, Nicholas. No, go on. I was just gonna say, I, yeah, I think it. I think it makes sense. It doesn't actually. I don't think make more work. It just um, sort of removes maybe sort of imposter syndrome where people, oh, someone else will go look at it. And uh, yeah, I, I think it could be a good idea. Make me more likely to go uh, look at it if there's like a specific week where I feel accountable. Yeah, I'm good with that too. Yes, we just have to find a way as well to say, oh, no, I won't be available this week. Yeah, I think a way of doing that could be, say, um, you're put up on triage and on Monday you check and you find that you can't. Maybe we can have like a button in the app that says I can't this week and it's like basically pops out a new name. Um and you bump that person um, saying like, hey, I was supposed to be on it, but I can't this week. You're up. Um, but that's a good request for this triage app. I will add that to it in some way. Yeah, it, uh app I used in the past was basically using PagerDuty for this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we always had to uh, give it input about times off and everything so that we you don't get screwed up because uh, the one in responsible for it is, uh, is in time off and, and can't respond. So yeah. That's something we have to, uh, well, take care that we won't end up, well, I say time off, but it can also be that, uh, no, this week I'm on a release crunch on, uh, another, uh, on another project. I won't be available at all or anything because, well, we obviously uh, have other project going, I think. <laughs> All right, yeah, these seem to be really good ideas. Is there any, does anyone have any other ideas on community growth or maintainership? All right, um, any other topics? Oh, God. I have one more um, thing. I think it'd be kind of fun. I feel like we have a lot of changes coming up and we're, a lot of us are busy, but I think it would be fun to have some sort of like awkward ga gathering at some point if we're like pushing towards the deadline where we can kind of have like all in one place if possible or like kind of focused in on it. Um, if it happened to be that we are all like headed towards this to a similar conference or something like that some sort of way to kind of push forward or kind of have like a intense hackathon or something for the week would be very cool weekend. I'm not saying a full week. I don't know, but something on the radar. If we feel like we have a lot of things coming together at once.
And I guess that basically means getting Nicholas to Seattle. <laughs> And me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are any of y'all going to Open Source Summit in Seattle? Open Source Summit North America? When is that? Oh, April. Uh, definitely the Open Source Summit is not in my uh, list. Worth a shot. Maybe KubeCon NA, maybe people can make it out, hopefully. <laughs> when is it this? Oh, it's in Utah in November. That's fun. But yeah, the gathering sounds like a really fun idea. Yes, it looks like a f good idea as well. Okay. Any other topics? So I have one topic that I uh, want to get uh, everyone's opinion. So for the telemetry um, in used in ACRI, we use a uh, Prometheus format. So um, anyone have an, any idea or uh, opinion about um, using the OTL, uh, open telemetry format, um, have the ACRI to support um, either support both format or switch to use the OTL term format. I'd vote switch to OTL. I feel like everyone uses OTL and I wrote the Prometheus thing, so you're not hurting my feelings. Okay. So we can consider um, completely switch to hotel um, for the Kubernetes. Okay, then maybe I'll create an, another issue. Get track of this. Yeah, and that's a really well scoped one as well. Um, mm -hmm. And some people are very specialized in hotel and just telemetry in general. So even if one of us doesn't want to take that on, that's a good community member ask. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I remember that uh, some time ago we talked about the fact we sh probably could have a list of uh, low hanging fruits to for beginners to uh, kind of uh, get them in the project when, especially when we have a conference like KubeCon where we're going to talk about Acri. So maybe if we could have those uh, issues marked as a good first issue and uh, have them, uh, I'd say, written for KubeCon would be a, a good idea. Also be cool if every, like maybe one of the triage duties you have is to like, like uh, promote in the Aukri Slack, hey, these good first issues are available for community. Like if you're a new community member, we've got these good first issues up and just kind of promoting those every week. It might get awkward if it's the same every week. Um, so maybe not, but it could be fun to try out. some kind of Slack reminder. Hey, here's the list of the good first issues. <laughs> Only other thing um, 
to think about is um, I started moving discovery handlers out of Ocri, took a pause on that, but UDEV is pretty much there. There's potentially a world in which I could move out the rest before we cut a release. But I think we hadn't fully figured out how we want to handle versioning. Um, but that would be something to keep in the horizon of, I think that's going to make it really a lot easier for people to contribute to Ocri. Um, and another reason why I am, um, yeah, I think it'll be like a, because then you don't need to um, support like the device system, like the UDEV device system. So you can develop on a Mac, which is very helpful um, for the UDEV scenario. And also for supporting all their operating systems as a whole, as you said in the as a comment you know, on the on the PR. Yeah, because I think we're close to being able to support Windows. Like we could do a big push. I think there's some uh, socket libraries we use that we need to update the use of um, to be able to support Windows. But um, we could once we move UDEV out support Windows as long as we don't add in other um, dependencies. Well, uh, I just wonder for the agent how this would work as it uses Unix sockets for talking with the with the kubelets. So they might, they're probably something similar, but we need to take care of this, for example. Yeah, that's exactly what I was referring to. There is, um, there are ways to do UDS for Windows and um, like looked at this in like 2021 and there was a workaround then. So my assumption is by now there's like probably an established way of doing it that's not as hacky, um, but maybe not. Maybe that's just an unsolvable problem. Oh, and thinking about uh, adoption and everything. Maybe we should uh, get us listed on the cube.rs adoption uh, file. That'd be great. Um, yeah, especially once we update to the latest cube.rs. Yeah. And I saw that they uh, moved from sandbox to. Uh, Yes, I think that's from Sandbox to Incubating. So they are our CNCF project as well. Another one we should be listed under is Device Plugin Interface and DRA. Yeah. Like DRA under the when fact we that have something. I think we could be listed under the Device Plugin Interface uh, spec right now. Yes, I think so. Is there like a formal process for getting us listed under these things or is it just like reaching out to the right people? Um, um, I think it's usually like just making a PR to add you to the list. Like this one, we could literally just go where the button says edit this page and submit a PR and say, hey, we're a CNCF sandbox project and oh. we've been using Ocri for this many years. Um, and yeah, they probably would just accept the PR. Oh yeah, Crestlet's on the list of adopters. We should go ahead and completely get on that QBRS one. That's, yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. Maybe we put up an issue for these. Um, I'll do that right now for our free. And yeah, maybe promote our, our own 
adopters file some way. Okay, I just put up an issue on it. Are we aiming to do triage this meeting? Um, we could, we have a few minutes left. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. This, UTEP and predictable resource IDs. Is there a way to have predictable names? It's screen? an old one, I think. Yeah, it um was closed automatically by the stale bot, which I'm thinking we might want to remove. Um, especially once we get a triage thing in place. But yeah. So what this should we move to backlog? In fact, this one, I think the real uh, issue should be maybe we should uh, completely delegate the ID generation, uh, not just the, uh, the well, currently the discovery handler gives uh, an ID string and we uh, kind of mess up with that ID to uh, get up with a the ID we use for the instance name and everything. Uh, maybe we should try to uh, move from that to a world where the discovery handler directly gives us a uh, usable ID. Uh, so this way, if there's some kind of, well, probably a new UID would be the best there. And uh, so that if the discovery handler has some way of giving us some kind of already predictable ID that is already known by the user would be ideal. So for example, I think that uh, OPC UA uh, has a UID property uh, or similar. So this should be, well, even for UDEV, you can have like for USB keys, you can have the partition UID or the uh, uh, how do I view ID or whatever? So there are time where you already have some stable ID available and maybe we should give a way for uh, discovery handlers to just give that ID as is. Yeah, I agree. So maybe we update uh, maybe we create a new issue um, that's a feature request and we can just point out to this one from it um, that basically says update our discovery handler interface. I can do that right now um, to, yeah, enable discovery handlers to generate um, IDs instead of the agent doing it. Um, at the same time, this would probably drop... Uh make us drop the shared uh, flag. That doesn't really change anything uh, from the uh, Acri points of view. It's mainly uh, used to, well, it's used only for 
choosing whether we hash with the host name or not. And if we give the ID full control, well, full control of the ID to the discovery handler, then this flag is also in full control of the discovery handler. Well, not existing anymore would be even more real. Yeah, so I guess we would just expand what a device type is in our interface to include also, well, maybe we just make device ID the actual ID. Like, could we just change how we interpret it? Yeah, but that would be kind of a still a breaking change anyway, because uh, currently, for example, if you take the udev one, it gives the path, uh, the sys path. So if you were to give that uh, directly, it would just break when trying to put that as the name of the instance. Um, oh yeah, definitely. I totally agree. It's breaking. Um, but I think that's a good point. We should. So changing the interface and ensure that we don't misinterpret the or, or misuse the field. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I guess if you create a feature request, you could just comment it here and then we can probably close this. I wouldn't close it until it's satisfied, but I'll link to it. Sounds good. Uh... So this one I created last month um, because I think we had an action item. Um, I know we, I think it, we upgraded like the license and did like a short term fix, but um, in the long term, we can migrate to the CNCF recommended stack, which would be Hugo, Doxy. Um, so I just created a issue to um, track this so we can probably put this in the backlog for now and um, we can take a look maybe right after KubeCon. Uh, this This one, if it's just about making a PR, I can probably just do this. Um, I'll take a look and see what I can do. Um, create an adopters file. We should have a list of all the projects, products currently using Augury. In the way of um, we we currently have an adopter an adopters file on the main repo, uh, adopters.md. Uh, so maybe it just be linking to that one, or maybe we want it in the documentation. So anyway, we should ensure that we don't have two different files that have different informations there. Either by linking to the adopters MD in the main repo or the other way around. This one, um, does anyone want to be assigned to this? 
also take over. And then this one, I think Johnson just created for switching from Prometheus to Hotel. Um, does anyone want to take a look at this? Or we could put it in investigating. Um, I can look at that um, one as well. Uh, what's your what's your GitHub? L L I L. It's a, a you can. Oh, I don't know why I'm not turning up. Uh, I'll send myself to it. If, uh, oh. Okay, great. Uh, and then this is for the cert rotation. Uh, hey, Johnson, I'm just updating your issues with the description. Um, Thank you. Does anyone want to take a look at this one or should we put it in the backlog? So for this one, I think um we... We also talk about to switch to QBIs and the that will um I think they would relate it to how this get addressed. Do we have uh, I think we already have an issue for the QPIs uh six oh three I believe. Uh, no, not six oh three. The one that uh cat just is it this one? Sure. Three, uh, seven, five. Yeah, and I can take a look about this issue. It looks like I can't add myself. I guess I don't have privileges. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way I can get that? Um, we, I, do you know why we can't? <laughs> I wasn't able to edit things on the roadmap previously. Um, yeah, do you have to be a maintainer to for that? Whatever or? it is that you need to be added, I'll make sure you're in it. Okay, and then this is the device ID thing, which we can link to this one too. I think I linked them already. OK, perfect. Um, should we assign anyone to this right now, or we can just leave it in the backlog? I think that's more of less of a priority than other things, but yeah, and I think it is going to have to wait for the agent refactor anyway, because well, it's likely to be well, well, not a lot of changes in the agent, but more in the uh. Discovery handlers, but yeah. I don't remember if we created an, an issue as well for the um, publishing the crates on crates dot higher. Okay, I do have to drop, um, but thank you everyone for attending today's meeting. Um, are there any last minute things? All right, well, 
thank you everyone and um nicholas will touch base about the kubecon stuff and i think the rest of us will talk offline about cutting the release and then yeah we'll go from there